Let's have a look, shall we, at the grid and see exactly how they are lining up ahead of this first race of round six of Titans RX Europe here in Montalegre. So you can see on pole position. He took a podium yesterday here for round five. Even Ares alongside him. Kevin Hansen in the middle. Perry McCarthy with work to do. He is alongside Kevin Hansen. And then the local boy Armindo Arujo on the outside of the track. Now this is going to be pretty crucial. The start as we know in Rallycross Max is very, very important. Absolutely. To get this procedure right and to get the car uh, off the line uh, perfectly is really something that decides much of the race. It really does. So then wait for the ready to race board to be displayed. It's displayed now. Q1 here at Montalegre is... Underway and it's a very good launch there from Kevin Hansen up the middle of the uh, front row of the grid. Look at Armindo Arujo, he got a very good start as well. Andrew Jordan, oh, and bit of contact there with Ares and Arujo coming to blows down towards the first corner. Four cars almost as a train down into turn one. They all oh, nearly make it through, but Arujo gets stopped there. And Andy Jordan also suffering some strife. Ares gets up into third position with Perry McCarthy inheriting from all of that there into second place. Yeah, he had a really clever move coming in from the outside and waiting to see what the others were doing. That was very, very good. Cool. Very good stuff there from Perry McCarthy. He's in second place. Kevin Hansen does still lead the way. Even Ares in uh, third position as things stand here in Titan R, uh, Titans R Race going through that right hander. This is where it gets really tight in this last section of the track. We did see a couple of overtakes in that penultimate corner of the uh, lap last time around yesterday. See Armindo Arujo just clipping the wall on the inside there. That's very, very easy to do. And you can see the bodywork damage there for Ivan Ares. He's, uh, you can see the contact and the uh, strife that he's gotten himself into. And McCarthy goes wide. That allows Ares through and also allows Andy Jordan nearly to pull alongside and he does pull alongside and he finds his way past absolutely brilliant stuff there from Andrew Jordan up into third place Ares now into second it's tantalizing racing here in Q1 oh it's a really good change in position because every mistake like going through that right-hander now and, and just how difficult is it when you're fighting in amongst the group we saw Perry he had a really really good start but he looks to be struggling in these early stages here Yeah, they certainly do. And you can see Armindo Arujo pulling alongside McCarthy down towards the first corner. He's surely going to be having a lunge, and he does have a lunge. He gets through into fourth position. Nice driving there from Armindo Arujo. Does McCarthy try and fight it back on exit? He tries, but doesn't quite get the drive out of that corner there, Max. Yeah, it's uh, very important to start the acceleration phase shortly before the apex. And uh, again, you know, the track drivers find that uh, harder to do. Through the right-hander we go then. Here is Ivan Ares in the light blue Pantera, closely followed by Andrew Jordan. What's going to be going through Andy Jordan's mind there? He made a really, really good start, but just caught, got caught in incidents that weren't kind of his fault, really. Well, basically, you just have to shut that out of your mind immediately and just focus on the certainly do and uh, well that's exactly what he is doing there Andy Jordan really closing up onto the back of the Spaniard now going through turn number one he's got good pace here in this sort of latter stages of this race seems to be getting his act together a bit more inside this top three so through the left and then to right onto the dirt section how difficult is it to change from the tarmac onto the dirt here at Montenegro next? well the change is not uh, too hard as such but you, you need to have the right speed going onto the dirt to get your load change uh, at the right moment and the car aligned properly Yeah, you can see that uh, Jordan is really picking up speed here and uh, closing in on Ares and uh, we might see a maneuver before the end of this race. takes victory in Q1 here at Montenegro. A textbook drive from the Swede, the victor of round five of Titans RX yesterday. Armindo Arujo finishes down in fourth place, but even Ares does hold on to second. Andy Jordan in fourth, Arujo in fourth, as we said, and Perry McCarthy does finish away back down there in fifth position.
very impressive racing for McCarthy down there, 17 seconds uh, of a drift back, which is, uh, well, that'll be disappointing there for McCarthy. What do you think could be going through his mind? He had a really good start, but just didn't have the pace to keep with his front runners. Well, uh, he's definitely going to be a little bit disappointed, but he's very realistic about his uh, opportunities here. And uh, when I speak to him, he says, look, I'm having such a good time after not racing uh, all these years, and it's just fantastic. And I know I'm not going to be on, on the podium, but I still do my best. Well, let's have a look at the highlights then from Q1 Race 1 here at Montalegre and see exactly what happened. So away from the lights, it was a very good start from Kevin Hansen. Armindo Arujo also got away well, but it's down towards the first corner here, Max. You could see all of the cars sort of trying to go into one, and it well, didn't work at all, did it? Yeah, well, actually, what they were trying to do is uh, stay a, a lot cleaner. I'm not sure why uh, Jordan got stuck there, but Perry certainly made the best of it. And uh, that corner in the, the first, I think everybody was a bit rough yesterday, trying to push his wing. And now they learned that they're much better off keeping it clean. Well, this is Arujo getting past McCarthy as well as he began to slip back through the field, down through the right hand. You saw McCarthy trying to get a better exit, but he just wasn't quite able to do so. No such dramas, though, for that man there. Kevin Hansen, a very, very commanding victory in Q1 here in Titans RX in Montalegre. Very impressive stuff. So good to see racing already back with a bang here for round six. Yeah, I'm very pleased with uh, this uh, first group going out here because they are the not so experienced drivers and particularly the performance of uh, Arujo and the uh, Ares is, is really good to see that they're picking up the car and the track so quickly. Let's take a look at the final results then from Q1 here at Montalegre shall we and uh, see exactly who finished where as we saw on screen just a few minutes ago of course Kevin Hansen took the victory 30 points in the bag for the young Swede here in Portugal even Ares 25 points for him in second place and Andrew Jordan 20 points for him in third position Armindo Arujo 15 and Perry McCarthy there in fifth position 10 points on the ball for the British driver. Be interesting to see what they uh, do going in towards Q2 and Q3 uh, later on today. Yeah, I think uh, they are going to uh, obviously have an advantage having made good points uh, in the first uh position because in the first race because that will improve their position so definitely uh, for them having a good uh, result here was important and uh, that improves their ability to drive with the faster drivers so it's a good start for those who make good points well exactly and after you've had that q1 you've got the first one out of the way Well, I think uh, it's a little bit like uh, like in tennis, the only important ball is the next one. <laughs> and we say in rallycross, the only important corner is the next one. So that's what you focus on. You basically shut out where you are, you shut out what your position is, and you just make the best of the car and the track. Well, that's exactly what the drivers have been doing here in Montalegre. Let's get ready then for race two of Q1 here in Montalegre. Ollie Webb. Now, how impressed have you been with Ollie Webb's adaptation to rallycross? He was absolutely incredible in, in Linden Hill, but that was to be expected because it's, it's more tarmac. And I think he had an adjustment day yesterday to get used to the very deep gravel. The gravel also is going a bit uh, less aggressive. There's less gravel than yesterday. So I think all this is going to do really well today. Let's keep an eye out for him. Craig Breen also very, very quick out of the blocks. Keep an eye out for this man, though. Timmy Hansen, he will line up on pole position here for race two. Let's get down to Rachel, though. She has found one of our drivers. Uh, Q1, uh, well, coming in first. Um, I, I know you did exceptionally well yesterday. Is your confidence at an all-time high, or do you have to wipe the slate clean? No, I, I'm very confident. I really get to know my driving now on the track, and I find my way through and work on the very small details overnight, which makes a difference when the cars are all the same. So I had a really good run, and I stole the engine one time, so I was close to stop and, and lose some positions. But uh, some small mistakes, but uh, overall it was an okay run. It, the track was watered, so I hope it doesn't make too big of a difference for the others. Okay, well, uh, thank you for talking to us. Uh, we've got to go straight over to Tom now. Over to you, Tom. Yeah, ready for race two of Q1 here in Montalegre. It's actually Jerome Gross in who starts on pole position for this one. Alongside him is Timmy Hansen, older brother to Kevin. Ollie Webb in the middle of the row there. Craig Breen alongside him and Riley Sample there on the outside, Max. Pretty tantalising grid. Yeah, I think it's going to be very exciting, uh, particularly Timmy Hansen and Greg Breen, I think, are really, really trying to win uh, this one. And uh, Jerome is always good for surprises. He's an excellent driver. He certainly is. He's had a bit of uh, bad luck so far in Titans RX. So let's see whether he can turn things around here for Q1 of round six in Montalegre. Ready to race board is about to be displayed here then. Let's see what will happen over of this race. It's going to be very exciting indeed. The marshal at the front just checking that everything's OK with the drivers. Ready to race board is to play Q1. Race two here in Portugal is... 
Underway, very good launch there from Jerome Gross. It's in Oli Webb, left a little bit standing. Great Green and Timmy Hansen also getting away well. Three wide down towards the first corner. Keep an eye out as they all seem to break very late indeed. Timmy Hansen has the inside line and gets the whole shot into turn one. Green on the outside as Gross edging in, gets through on the corner exit and he's nearly pulling alongside Timmy Hansen as they go through into the right and then the left. Absolutely fantastic stuff there from Timmy Hansen. Yeah, I can see that they're all now very, very careful in the first corner, which is good because everybody wants to get the end of the race, not <laughs> like yesterday. Yeah, it makes life easier for the bottom down his off for this one. Well. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Moving right down, here we go. Timmy Hansen sliding that Pantera. Look at Craig Breen, though. He is looking aggressive to the maximum as things stand at the moment, trying to find his way past Jerome Gross agent in. And well, Craig Breen, he's not used to competing with other cars out on track, uh, given he comes from a rallying background, but he's doing so well in his adaptation. It's so hard to overstate just how well he's doing. He has one of the best techniques around the corner. His exit speed is a few clicks faster than anyone else. Really, really see that gross vision in does manage to just pull a little bit of an advantage out of turn number one. You can see they're just gapping Ollie Webb there in fourth place as well. And uh, Ronnie Sample holding on to fifth position as things stand, going through this right hand of those green with a very wide line there. A bit of a mistake there from Craig Green. Yeah, I think he got kicked out of the line by the rut. Not the first time we've seen that, and probably not the last time we've seen here either. The deep gram was really, really good really really is and the drivers were saying this morning the circuit seems very very nice but of course the more cars you get on it the more it does kick up and create those ruts and how hard is it to control the car when you've got those ruts because it, it, almost you've got very limited haven't you? Well every lap is really different and uh, we're also uh, having to uh, deal with the fact that the track is watered in the morning and you're not sure what it's going to be like so the first few laps are always just finding your way. So through the right-hander we are then there is your own gross engine in the Frenchman doing a really good job in second position no such dramas though for Timmy Hansen who is leading the way very much like his brother who we saw in race one just a few moments ago absolutely textbook stuff for Timmy Hansen and of course this isn't only crucial for where they finish on the road but also their time points in this race as well oh absolutely because that's going to be if you win the race that's going to be uh, what defines where you are in the end and uh, you can see with the Hansen brothers that they have this skill of being really, really accurate, very clean, no unnecessary drifting, and they pick up every tenth of a second they can. And regarding the time points as well, what do you think the main motivation behind that is? Well, that time points really, the way we do it is to keep the fast cars together while giving the drivers uh, points for a position because we really want them to try and overtake. You can see that, speaking of overtaking, Craig Green is trying to get his way past your own gross engine in through the right hand. And we go once again, and Green, look at how sideways he is in that Pantera machine. He's so good in that third section of the lap, isn't he? Yeah, the third section is really his thing, and you can see that he's picking up a lot of uh, time there. But on to the final lap we go. Timmy Hansen leads the way very commandingly as things stand, but Breen is looking to try and find his way through against Gross Edge and in. He's surely going to try and switch back. Is he going to try and invent something at turn one? No, he opts against it as things stand for uh, Craig Breen at the moment. But, uh, well, very exciting racing going on between those drivers here in Titans RX at Montalegre. And you can see just how close he is piling that pressure on, but Jerome Gross is in, is parking that Pantera. Oh, but he finds his way through up the inside for Craig Breen. What a move! from the Irishman into second place on the last lap in Q1 here. That was absolutely textbook. Meanwhile, into the final corner and over the line for Timmy Hansen. He takes victory in Q1 here in Montalegre. Craig Green with a brilliant last lap pass on Jerome Gross edging in, gets second place. Yeah, that was a textbook move. He just uh, waited for his right movement. A bit on the throat, to lean on the other car and just uh, find your way through. That was fantastic there. Oliver Webb finishes in fourth position. Reini Sample in fifth as well as the drivers come over the timing line to complete Q1. Race two here at Montalegre for round six of Titans RX in 2019. Well, a great race from Timmy Hansen. A good start to the uh, round for the Hansen brothers, both taking victories in their respective Q1 races. Let's take a look, shall we, at the highlights of that race two here in Titans RX at Montalegre. Well then, away from the lights, really good launch from Craig Breen, as we have seen also Grosic in, and Hansen getting a really good getaway as well. But Hansen got the advantage down in towards Turn 1, then it all concertinaed up. Yeah, they are really trying to uh, avoid any bad contact, which is uh, good to see, and it makes the race a lot more interesting later. And uh, it's obviously much better to uh, keep it clean rather than crashing out. Well, Craig Breen then, he was stuck behind Grosic in for the vast majority of that race, but really pulled it out of the bag in those last couple of laps, didn't he? 
Yeah, you have to wait for your moment. It doesn't make any sense, you know, to try and uh, uh, do it too early. Uh, and he made this one mistake where he went really wide and it lost him quite some distance, so he had to catch that up again and then do his move in the last, the last lap. So you can see just how much pressure he was putting on Gross Edgen in going through that final corner onto the final lap. He was very close down in towards turn one, but not quite close enough to launch a move of the Frenchman, but it was into that right-hander that he found his way past on the curb on the inside, muscled his way through against the Frenchman and into second place as Timmy Hansen came over the line to take a very commanding victory in Q1. Let's get down to Rachel who is with the man who made that move of Craig Green. That was, that was amazing right at the end then. Uh, talk us through that, that, that race. Yeah, I made a bit of a mess at the start of it to be honest with you. I, uh, I wanted to rut so I lost the front and I completely uh, went wide and dropped, I don't know, three or four seconds I was way back so uh, yeah, fortunate enough, I was sizing it up for the last couple of laps and I could see he was leaving a bit on the on the entry to the first bit, so I went for it and it worked, so happy. I'm very happy, and you said before, um, with this racing, you're just, you've got that kind of fear, you're just going to look ahead. Is that exactly what you did to this one? Yeah, I know, it's, uh, it's definitely interesting. I'm just sorry I lost a good bit of time there in that one, uh, but look, at still seconds, not a bad way to start. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. Uh, back to you, Tom. Great to hear from Craig Breen there. What a great move he made there on the last lap. And well, you can see just how much it meant to him. He was grinning from ear to ear after that. Yeah, he was uh, obviously disappointed with his uh, quite big mistake, but he made good of it. And uh, it, it is really important, you know, for the driver in front to, to watch his mirrors because they don't have a spotter. And if you have uh, a driver like Craig behind you, you just can't keep an open line. You have to keep it closed and make sure that they can't, don't come in on the inside. Unless you try and make a move, of course, happen as well. So let's have a look at the results of that race then, shall we? Race two of Q1 here in Montalegre. Timmy Hansen takes victory, 30 points on the board for the Swede. Then Craig Breen with 25 points in second place. Grosjean in with third and 20 points on the board for him. Then Oli Webb with 15. Uh, Ronnie Sample in fifth with 10 points there. So now our focus does shift over to race three of Q1 here at Titans RX. You can see the cars all lined up here on the grid. There's Tom Coronel, a brand new entry for this weekend. And he was just uh, speaking to him at dinner last night. Actually, he was explaining how difficult it is to change over from tarmac racing into the world of rallycross. Yeah, he, he amazingly said that it's quite a big step for him to move to, uh, to forward play. You can see the cars lined up on the grid here. Here's Toppy Haken on pole position. Shushu alongside him. He'll be hoping for better luck here today. Tomorrow Molinaro who was very quick but also luckless in round five yesterday. Tom Coronel alongside her and Ronnie Searock on the outside of that row. Who is going to get the best drag down towards turn one is going to be the crucial question. Here is Tamara Molinaro's car. As we said, very quick out of the box yesterday but sadly two incidents at the first corner put pay to her weekend. Hopefully no such dramas for her here this morning. Wait for that ready to race board to be displayed then. Action of plenty to come here in Montalegre. Race three of Q1 here in Titans RX round six about to get underway. Just waiting for those final confirmations to take place. The marshal checking that everything is all okay at the front of the grid. Wait for that green flag to be waved at the back. The moment of silence falls over the circuit before the revs begin to rise. And race three of Q1 here in Montalegre is go. Good start there from Tom Coronel. Good launch also from Hakenden on the inside. They drag down towards the first corner with Chushu and Molinaro side by side down into towards turn number one. Coronel on the outside. Molinaro trying to sneak through in the middle. Bit of contact with Chushu there and running Searock into the back as well. And brilliant stuff there from Chushu to take the lead as Coronel gets shuffled out wide. So that was very opportunist there from the Hungarian driver and Hakenden slotting into second position here. Very impressive stuff there. You can see Ronnie Searock has actually managed to take advantage despite not making the best start there, Max. He's up in the third position following that corner. Well, he definitely made a good start on the corner, but uh, he's a little bit better with uh, uh, You can see that Hakenden as well, a little bit uh, tighter in the line. Shushu going a little bit wide through that right-hander. That allowed the fin to close up, close behind. Not able to find a way past as we ride on board here with Shushu. You can see how hard he's working away as Ronnie Searock runs a bit wide out of the first corner, kicks up a bit of dust, that allows Coronel to close up, and Coronel's surely going to try the switch back through that first turn. He doesn't quite manage to make anything stick going through there, but this is impressive stuff, and you can see just how much quicker Hakenden looks at this early stage of the race compared to Shushu. Yeah, it's really the technique, you know, keeping uh, the car really in line in the... In the in oh, he's found a way through, he's up the inside, they're running side by side through his right-hander, Hakenden versus Shushu, really a bit of driving there from top and here comes running Searock into the side of the uh, Hungarian driver as well through the left hander. Then the right, Shushu does hold on to second place, but Hakenden now is back out in front, Max. Yeah, we've got a bit of rivalry ongoing between uh, Shushu and, and Ronnie. 
and uh, we, they, they're battling it really hard out every time. Yeah, there were a few uh, unpleasant words, I think, exchanged after the semi-finals yesterday. Well, they just had a little discussion, but that's just part of racing. <laughs> it certainly is, yeah. You're racing on track, and well, in close combat such as Rallycross, it does lend itself to tempers giving you a bit of flair every now and then. Yeah, but they're very good sports about it. You know, uh, obviously, they are very similar in speed, so they need more contact. Racing and certainly in terms of running cross and here in Titans RX, Hakenen has managed to build up quite a significant gap to Shushu. Now he's not got the Hungarian driver in front of him. Look at Ronnie Searock, look how sideways his style is. Sideways though, not necessarily the fastest way around the track. Well, it depends. There are some areas where you have to put the car sideways to line it up for the exit, but uh, in, a, in a nice corner, you try to drift as little as possible. Yeah, and keep the grip and uh, keep the full momentum going as much as you can. That yeah, is you see there Tom Coronel in fourth position and uh, well Coronel doing a really good job and this is going a lot better than it was this time yesterday morning because of course if you remember ended up in some drama with the first turn and uh, ended up uh, sadly not end, uh, finishing the race then of course we went into the uh, latter qualifying sessions he wasn't able to take a restart and things kind of went downhill and I think that's one of the things that people love about Titans the competitors especially is that they get the chance to do it all again on Sunday that is really I think one of the best things and it's very good to see that uh, all the cars are fairly close together and even so uh, one of the drivers is completely muted you know and they're very different drivers all the time and that's kind of one of the reasons so uh, 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 well this is the thing with Titus RX is that one mistake can cost you so much don't you? you run yes. wide in the corner and it can cost you position and allow the other driver to find their way through on the inside or so for such like it, it really is very impressive Ronnie Searock is so close now to the back of Shushu, not able to find a way past, but uh, Shushu's drive through into that left and right hander was not quite brilliant over the line. Toby Hagenen takes victory in Q1 race three here in Montalegre, but who held on to second place? Did Shushu do it? Yes, he did. He just managed to get ahead of Ronnie Searock over the line. Brilliantly impressive stuff there from Shushu to just hold it after that mistake in the final sector. Tom Coronel as well with fourth position and Tamara Molinaro inside the top five as well. Brilliant racing there. Yeah, I thought it was really great to see them all so close together, which means they all have adjusted, they all kept it clean through the first corner, and then we saw some very nice line driving and drifting in the corners, so I think Droll now adjusted to the cars, and Q2 and Q3 are getting to be even more exciting. And look at the crowd here at Montalegre as well, we've got so many supporters from Portugal and also Spain, which is very close. Yeah, we are absolutely happy with the crowds that came here, uh, you know, for the first time we're coming to Portugal with this series, and yesterday was already good, and today with the spectators is fantastic. It really is. Let's get ready to look at some highlights then of race three of Q1 here in Montalegre and see exactly what happened. So away from the lights, really good launch there from Haken and great launch also from Tom Coronel. He got away out of the blocks very nicely indeed down towards that first corner. It all began to Constantina up though. We saw Molinaro on the inside there. She got squeezed. That pushed Shushu as well. Ronnie Searock was trying to find his way through and did find his way through as Coronel managed to run wide at that first turn and really that sort of put him out of contention, didn't it? Well, he recovered actually pretty well and there must have been some mistake by Tamara so she was overtaking by Tom again and uh, that's kind of difficult if you miss the first run until you catch the speed that's a little bit tricky. Well, this is Shushu running wide on this opening lap. Toppy Hakenen there in second place. And, well, I tell you what, Shushu there was actually very lucky. Hakenen didn't try and find a way through as well. Yeah, actually, he made a big mistake there and uh, he was lucky that he wasn't already overtaken at that point. So this is going on to the next lap and you can see that Shushu soaking up that pressure from Toppy Hakenen, but it's easy to see how Hakenen found his way through. Shushu leaving that door open just enough to find a Titans RX car's whip to get through and then he was in the lead and never to be seen again and a bit of contact again between Shushu and Ronnie Searock. Yeah, exactly. Actually, Shushu was uh, very, very clever to not try to close the door on top of there because that could have cost him his from steering. He was much better off trying to stay in second place rather than trying to have a battle with uh, Toppy at that point. Brilliant stuff there as Ronnie Searock piling the pressure onto Shushi. He wasn't able to find a way past. Let's have a look at the final results then of Race 3 Q1 in just a few moments' time. There is taken and taking the chequered flag and taking victory as well. And crucially, of course, those 25 points on the board. So the 30 points, rather, I should say, on the board early doors for Toppy Haken and Shushi with 25 there ahead of Ronnie Searock in third with 20. Tom Coronel in fourth place and Tamara Molinaro in fifth. Let's get it down to Rachel, though, who is with our winner of Race 3 Q1. It's Toppy Hakenen. Thank you very much, John. Toppy, quite a battle with Shushu there at the start of that race. Yeah, for me, it's just an idiot driver. Uh, he puts me in the wide in the turn one and then just from the rear and, uh, yeah, nothing to say. For me, he's just an uh, idiot and that's it. Right, OK. And what's the conditions of the circuit like out there? You know, the circuit is fantastic and the racing also. Uh, 
yeah, I was enjoying every moment to sit down in this car and uh, I tried to do a bit better day than yesterday and uh, let's go. We are going that way, but uh, still more to do. Okay, brilliant. Thank you for talking to us, Toffee. Thank you. Back to you, Tom. Well, he didn't mince his words there at all, did he, Toppy Hakenen? He's no. an idiot driver, was the quote oh, I got from yeah. that. Yeah, obviously, right after you come off the track, you're full of adrenaline, and it's a little bit difficult, you know, to uh, to uh, check your emotions when you go to the interview. And uh, that's, you know, the way it goes, and he needs to get it off his chest. And yeah, it. exactly, that's it. Well, uh, either way, really good to see Toppy Hakenen. Again, he's leading so commandingly, uh, and has led so commandingly over the course of this season as well. It, it just goes to show that his rallycross experience has been very beneficial. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's such a, a good driver, such a competent driver, and, and maybe not as accurate as the Hansons, but he, he has this ability to, when it's necessary, to focus and just, uh, give much better results than anyone else. And what's your view on that incident at the first corner when we saw uh, Shu Shu and Hakenen coming to blows? Do you think that was harsh but fair? Well, it was a little bit tough action, but I didn't think it was uh, uh, out of a line. Uh, I don't know whether there were any penalties considered. Uh, we will see if anything comes up. But it didn't look like it was so bad, but it's always, always, always very, very annoying if you're in lead and somebody in the hind gives you a bit of a push. That's just uh, the way we do racing here. Yeah, absolutely right. And what about Tom Coronel as well? As we said, of course, first weekend in Rallycross, but doing a good job there in fourth place and crucially not losing too much touch with the likes of Ronnie Searock and Shushu, who are a bit more experienced in front of him. I think he did an excellent job in this race and uh, he did not lose much uh, on these two, which I think uh, is, is really excellent you know, for his second day in this car. Uh, so yeah, I'm very pleased with his uh, uh, performance here and I think he's going to show us a bit more uh, later today. Exactly, and of course the following that he brings to Titans R8, the, the social media following that Tom Coronel has is just incredible, isn't it? And you can see that with the fans that have been here to get autographs from him and photos with him as well. It, it, it's brilliant, isn't it? Uh, he's, uh, he's very good in doing that. He really understands social media. He's constantly tweeting and, and posting and uh, trying to find content that with his fans so he really understands this game yeah absolutely right well let's take a look at the incident at the first corner we saw between Toppy Hakenen and Shushu let's piece it together and see exactly what happened so down towards turn one you can see Hakenen in the lead here Shushu into the back end this is really all Constantine is up so Shushu got into the side of Tamara Molinaro or, or rather the other way around and then yeah, pushed him a little bit wide there but I think harsh but fair on that one I no, think... it wasn't really and he was also uh, he had cars behind so it was a typical race incident mm. in first corner and I think they both actually went pretty well about it so I uh, it's, it's more emotions than it was really a, a, a tough driving incident. Yeah, as you say, tempers get flared, and of course, that, ad, that adrenaline after the race as well, it's such a come down, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Really is impressive to see how these drivers have done. Let's have a look at the time points then, shall we, of Titans RX for round five after Q1 here this morning in Montalegre and see who was the fastest driver out of the 15 we had on track. Well, of course, no surprise at all, the Hansen brothers, but Timmy Hansen ahead of Kevin Hansen. 325 for Timmy, 327.4 for Kevin. Toppy Hayden there in third position on 328.1. Uh, then there's a bit of a gap down to Craig Green, Gross as Nin, Shushu a little bit further back, Ronnie Searock, Ivan Ares, and then, you can, of course, you can see the likes of uh, Andy Jordan, Tom Cornell along the fringes of the top 10. This is what it means, though, for the point standings here, uh, Max, as well. You can see 30 more points on the board there for Timmy Hansen. That's a great start to both Hansen brothers' day already. Well, uh, we, we chose this kind of, uh, of point system uh, to uh, uh, avoid the problems with the various track conditions. Yeah, you can see that the overall standings as things sit. Timmy Hansen, perfect start in his day. 30 points in the race, 30 points in the time standings as well. 60 points, a maximum on the board for him so far today. Kevin Hansen, though, just one point adrift there in second position. Toppy Hakenen, again, one point further back of him. Then there's a bit of a gap to Craig Breen, Shushu, Ivan Ares. The drivers just on the fringes of the top 10. You can see there Armindo Arujo and Ollie Webb, uh, Tamara Molinaro, Perry McCarthy and Riley Sample.